Hello, and welcome to On The Clock, presented by Workstream. If you care about hiring and retaining hourly employees, you're in the right place. I'm Daniel Blazer, and today I'm clocking in with Delisa Brokamp, HR and Talent Manager at Prime Hospitality Group. Prime employs close to 1,000 hourly employees across 15 locations and four states. Delisa speaks with me about why it's important to never lower your standards when interviewing and why hiring fairs are worth a shot. We also discuss the components that make up employee engagement and more. Enjoy! Can you provide kind of a, just a brief overview of your experience in the talent acquisition space? And then, you know, you mentioned what your role is at Prime Hospitality Group, but like kind of what that entails. Sure. I've worked as a human resources and talent executive for more than 15 years and have found talent acquisition and human resources to be inextricably linked. A large part of my passion and love for Prime Hospitality Group is the connectivity of the two. For me, talent acquisition manages the pre-boarding phase for hiring, and as an HR manager, I then have the opportunity to assist with the post-boarding after an employee has been hired. Just to kind of give our listeners an idea, um, approximately like how many hourly employees work for Prime Hospitality Group, um, and then follow up kind of onto that is how many open positions are you kind of involved in, in trying to fill like every month or so, you know, across all the locations? Uh, we currently have around 900. We fluctuate on average between 100 to 120 open roles across our 15 locations over four different states. That means uh, there's a lot of work to be done, I guess. Um, are you are you kind of like a, a one woman show or how does it work as far as the, the team that you know is in charge of trying to fill these open roles? We have a great team here. Uh, I am one of four and then uh, we have our CFO that we report up to. One question that I wanted to ask you about, because I was uh, snooping on your LinkedIn a little bit, and I saw that you had a post and it said, everyone is not hiring, everyone is interviewing, know the difference. And I read that and I thought, maybe I don't completely know the difference. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how, you know, what the distinction is between those two things and why it matters? Sure. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, what I meant was just because someone has a job opening does not mean that each interviewee is a great fit. You'll hear time and again, everyone is hiring, but it's really simply not the case. There are a lot of opportunities for you to submit a resume, but unless you have a standout bio, uh, your chance of really snagging a job, let alone an interview, is probably not going to happen. Only those with a top-notch resume that really meets the competencies of a job with maybe having an extra advantage of knowing somebody in a particular, particular hiring location really, really will have that advantage. My real advice for you is be genuine, showcase your skill sets, know and be able to express why you are the real fit for that job. And then you'll have a great advantage. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, just kind of, you know, calling out the importance of like, it's, you still have to I guess, earn or showcase your, your abilities, showcase your experience. Like you said, it's not just a gimme when you go into a job interview, I guess. Um, I guess one follow-up question on that is given the, the number of open roles that you're trying to fill and also just like the hourly hiring space, which I feel like has been a lot more challenging. Have you felt that it's uh, that you've maybe had to kind of compromise a little bit on like the level of experience or quality of an, of an applicant, like that, that it seems like that might be hard to maintain given just trying to get people in roles. Can you talk maybe about how you're able to strike a balance between those two? Sure. I feel as though you should never compromise. And that's a great question. Um, when it comes to hiring, I think that that's often a balance in a hiring position that people will want to jump to where it becomes that opportunity to want a warm body. Uh, I feel as though taking that risk is never, never one that you should do. You shouldn't feel as though 
okay, I'm, I'm going to hire this next person that comes in because we do have an open role. I still think you should set your standards high. You should always have your role in front of you, the description for your role, and you should never compromise. It should still be, this is the skill set I'm looking for because your person that you want, your right person for your right seat will come through the door. It's a matter of being patient and waiting and making sure that you do have your standards that you want, your skill set that you're looking for, and keeping that expectation high because that person will eventually come through your door. Yeah, yeah. I I think that's a really good perspective to have. And um, it's different a little bit than what I've, you know, heard from other people in, in maybe a sim- similar role as yours, which is like, we're just trying to get a warm body in the door. And we, you know, the, 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 I feel like sometimes there is a tendency to just kind of go with anyone because of there's like some desperation or whatnot. Um, I guess, sorry, one follow-up question that I just thought of is I feel like in order – in order to maintain your high standards, you probably have to have like some level of confidence in your, uh, in the, in the compensation and the culture and whatnot of your company. Right. Cause it's like, we know that we're a great place to work so we can maintain high standards. Uh, can you talk a little bit about maybe how you have paired like those high standards with like a good, you know, just making a uh, prime hospitality group, a great place to work? Absolutely. A lot of it comes down to knowing and believing in your core values uh, and then training your hiring managers up to those same standards, which we do. We have a lot of faith in in who we have in the right person in the right seat. It all comes back down to that. Uh, And knowing that we set out with our front of house managers, our sous chefs, our general managers and our executive chefs that we have set them up for success in that way. And it all goes back to the core foundation of core values. And as long as we have faith in that aspect, um, that they are going to continually have those, those skill sets and those standards and expectations. Um, what you run into is if you just put a warm body, you're going to see turnover and you're going to run back into a cycle of, rehiring and renegotiating um, and that catch 22 of consistently putting warm bodies in and that's not something that you want to do if you stay strong and if you keep consistent that you believe in your your role description um, that you have your core values in place you're not going to see consistent turnover and hopefully uh, which I will get to here in a little bit you'll be more proactive and if you continue to be proactive you're not going to see turnover in that way. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Um, one other thing that I, I noticed on your LinkedIn, uh, is that prime uses hiring fairs in your recruiting efforts. Um, can you talk about the hiring fairs? Are they, have you found them to be effective? Um, and yeah, just kind of what your strategy has been with those. Sure. Absolutely. Hiring fairs, uh, are twofold. Not only are they a great way to meet new potential employees, but they're also a phenomenal way to get your name out into the market. If it's a college fair, meeting those eager-eyed, budding students, uh, it's always inspiring to hear their stories as well as educate them about your respective industry. Uh, They're brand new into the field that they're choosing. Uh, But it's also, uh, if it's a career opportunity, then it's also a great way to get your name Uh, out into the market as well. It's exciting to help spread your name um, in that regard as well. Nice. Are you uh, typically, does Prime kind of sponsor the whole, uh, kind of the whole experience or are you kind of slotting into existing hiring fairs or do you kind of do some of both? A little bit of both. It's one of those where uh, If it's an opportunity, it's a great place. Uh, It's one of those where you should go for it. You should give it a shot. Uh, We'll do career fairs. We'll do um, industry-driven fairs. They're both really great opportunities. Nice. Okay. And let's say, so I've, you know, speaking with different people, I've heard varying levels of success with, uh, with hiring fairs. But let's say someone listening to this podcast they're like, I know it's like on the list. We've got to try it. We haven't really gone that route yet. Uh, what advice would you give them? How would you recommend that like maybe someone kick the tires or, or start out like where? Yeah. What recommendations would you make? Three words. 
go for it. Go for it. Job fairs are a terrific opportunity. Get yourself in front of hiring managers. Um, and then also the opposite of that is get your name out there. There's never a bad opportunity with a, with a career fair. Nice. I like that. Um, you touched a little bit on, uh, on this already, but this difference between proactive and reactive hiring, um, is that, you know, how would you kind of define the differences and maybe what are some examples of how you in your role in prime hospitality group is proactive, uh, rather than reactive? Being proactive requires you to be forward thinking and anticipate the next spot or job that you might need filled. For us at Prime, we call it filling or building bench strength. Um, for instance, we have a general manager right now who is planning to retire. Uh, so we know that that role is going to be open. So what we did is we put steps in place with him uh, to build the skill sets of one of our assistant general managers. We uh, have her work with him and learn from the general manager uh, to kind of fill what spots he would be leaving um, and ensure that transition to be a little seamless uh, to really work towards that. Reactive is another matter. Some of those situations are unavoidable. It happens when you have a manager suddenly leave without notice or uh, an instance that you really have no choice but to be reactive in. And then you need to fill that position as expeditiously as possible. Um, but you do it thoughtfully. So hopefully you don't find yourself in that same position in the near future. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, shifting over to retention, which I guess could also kind of slide into proactive versus reactive a little bit, right? Um, can you talk a little bit about why you think that employee engagement is so important? Engagement is not only important, but it should be treated as a mindset, uh, especially in the retention field. Um, it should be embedded in your culture, which is how we tend to approach it here at Prime Hospitality Group. Our culture is one where we work as a cohesive team. Uh, it truly is su supported by our core values. Um, our core values are demand for excellence, passion for hospitality, hunger to grow, unwavering commitment, and our desire to win. Without our core values at our foundation, there really is no employee engagement. I like those values a lot. Um, what would you say are maybe some common misunderstandings uh, around employee engagement, people not really realizing what it means or its significance, et cetera? I think probably the biggest and number one misconception with engagement would be that happy employees are engaged employees. It's just not true. Um, a lot of times people come to work with a smile on their face. It doesn't mean that they're engaged just because they're happy. Number two, higher paid employees or more engaged employees, also not true. Um, and then finally, that human resources is solely responsible for keeping your employees engaged also not true. It's a, it's a team effort, something that, that your entire team is responsible for. Yeah. So, you know, some of the things you mentioned that are misconceptions and it's, it doesn't directly translate to engagement. If someone, you know, listening to this podcast is like, oh, well that's, that is what I thought engagement was, or that's what we've been, you know, focusing on. What can they do to increase engagement and encourage engagement? Great question. Employees have the power really within themselves to make or break a company, which is why engagement is so essential to day-to-day -day operations. No doubt employees who are engaged are more likely to be productive, um, which is why employee engagement is so important. Uh, we need productive, motivated, happy, fulfilled employees. They also lead to higher retention rates. You don't want that turnover to be a problem. Uh, that said, we at Prime Hospitality believe providing employees with ongoing training opportunities, um, growth potential, consistent, clear, open communication, transparency. You want to build trust. First and foremost, you want to build trust. It's a really important uh, prospect. Loyalty, enthusiasm, all of these really build on each other to build a foundation for employee engagement. Um, you want growth plans, prioritize employee recognition, things like that, and then foster a sense of belonging. Um, 
which I'm proud to say, that's kind of the foundation that we have here, which is why we have really great employee engagement and retention rates at Prime Hospitality. Are you able to kind of uh, communicate some of those things you just talked about in, you know, in the the hiring stage or in a job listing or, you know, is that something that I'm, I'm guessing it kind of starts early in the process? Could you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Don't be afraid at that very first touch, that very first connection with a potential employee to let them know if you have core values and what those core values are. Build that solid foundation from the very, very beginning. Be transparent. Um, let them know if, if you have uh, a solid foundation, what that transparency looks like, and build on that from the very beginning. Um, we do a great job here to let them know, here's what our entire process is, what it's going to look like from the beginning. So there's no surprises. There's no hidden um, hidden opportunities, really, per se. Um, and that way they know from the beginning what their whole um, onboarding and pre-boarding will look like throughout their entire process with Prime Hospitality. Um, and I think if you do that from the beginning phases, they'll build that rapport with you. Um, they'll know who their contact is from the beginning. Uh, that way they have that that connection uh, right at right at the beginning of, the, of their relationship with, with their potential employer. To kind of broaden it out a little bit, I would love to hear just like, what do you love about your job? You've mentioned a lot of good things about Prime, but you know, specifically about your role, uh, what do you love? We really build on a family atmosphere. Um, even with, as we discussed previously, Daniel, that we have 900 employees uh, from an hourly perspective that doesn't count our full-time um, salaried employees. We're a family. Um, we have a solid foundation, core values. All of those things really make us a close-knit and have values. Um, we deliver that passion daily. We encompass a lot of that in who we are. Building on that solid foundation um, gives you respect and trust, um, which sometimes can be hard to build on. But if you start that from that very first connection, it's not. Um, having that family culture, that trust, that transparency, it's really, it makes it get up, makes you get up every morning, makes it easy to go to work. Um, you know what your day is going to entail. You know what's going to unfold every single day. Um, it makes it worth it. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but you know, the, the listeners of this podcast are a lot of them are kind of maybe in a similar role as you. They're concerned about hiring. They're concerned about retention. Knowing that, what advice would you, I mean, you've already given them a lot of great advice, but, you know, kind of leaving maybe one last word of advice or recommendation with listeners, what would you say? If you are looking for a job, make sure you understand competencies of that particular role. If you do that and you apply for a job, tailor your resume. Um, it, it's not anything out of the norm to have a specific resume tailored for what you are looking for. Showcase your qualifications, experience, and make sure it fits that role. And of course, as you know how I feel, utilize Workstream. It's a phenomenal resource. It is there to help you attract, maintain, and retain top talent. Um, I'm a huge fan of Workstream. I would not be efficient and effective in my job if I did not have Workstream as, as an opportunity to help me do what I do every single day. 100 to 120 open roles, uh, we wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for Workstream. Uh, it was great to, to chat with you and kind of hear, you know, your perspective and, and your experience and whatnot. Awesome. No, I appreciate your time. We appreciate Workstream and everything that it's done to help us grow and to help us become who we are. Uh, and we look forward to a really long working relationship with you guys. Thank you for listening to On The Clock. For more info, visit workstream.us slash podcast. I've also included a link in the show notes to connect with Delisa on LinkedIn. Until next time, we're clocking out.